Hello, this is uh, Remy on Beta Series La Radio. Today we are uh, in the partnership with our uh, Cannes Series Festival. We are welcoming Kate Ashfield. Kate Ashfield, as a writer of one of the series, of the great series in competition in the festival, a Finnish series called Man in Room 301. Kate is an English writer. Among others, I read, but you can be more specific, that you won even a BAFTA award as a co-creator of the series Born to Kill. You're also an actress. Um, so today, obviously, we discuss about the series and you as the writer of it. So my first question would be very simple. Can you pitch us the series? What it is about? What, what is the story? Okay, very simply, the story is about a family, who, a Finnish family, who go on holiday to Greece and they think the man staying in room 301 of their hotel complex is the grown up killer of their grandson. And that's, well, yeah, that's it. So it's about um, them finding out if it really is him and, and um, delving into the past and what really happened to their grandson 12 years ago. Great. So I must say, I watched two episodes yesterday. It was very intense, a lot of suspense, strong and very interesting characters. Great, great stories. I just look forward to watching the remaining four episodes, right? There are six in, in the That's total. Right, yeah. Um, yeah. How did you have the idea? Is it an adaptation or I heard something about that? Could, could we be more specific and explain us the creation of this series? Um, <clears throat> okay, so the... the um the producer of one of the producers of the series, Eleanor Green, she originally had an idea which was kind of based on two famous murder cases in this country and um, an and amalgamation of them both. And um, uh, and then um, when when she pitched it to um, Warner Brothers Finland and Elisa, the company that, that um, uh, produced it, they they it became, became a very different idea because um, in Finland, they don't incarcerate children like we do in this country. And um, and so it, it, that was like the kernel of the idea. And then it morphed into this story when I came on board because I really was fascinated about families and different generations of the same family and how um, the story could be told differently so that you learn bits as you go along of what actually happened in the past and how everyone's coped with it or not coped with it in the present. Um, so yeah, so, so yeah, that's how, that's how it took shape. So as an English writer, you were projected in a Finnish plot, local, a quite local story, also with a universal, uh, you know, uh, with universal themes. Uh, it's a religious drama that can be of appeal to anybody, but it's, it's very local, taking place in Finland. There are many cultural differences between the UK, between Finland. So how did you manage to be so universal in the drama, in the plot, but also being so local, authentic, with uh, only Finnish characters? The way of life is really Finnish. So did you spend time in Finland? Did you uh, write with, uh, were you assisted by local writers? How did you manage to be so local at the same time? Well, well, um, yeah. I mean, that was that was one of the challenges of the of the whole piece, really. But um, I did visit Finland lots of times, and um, and I did work closely with um, uh, Warner Brothers Finland and and different people who worked there who who um, helped uh, give notes on the script, give notes on the characters, and the strangest things that would you wouldn't foresee as a writer uh, of the cultural differences. I mean, off the top of my head, things like I had at one point one of the characters breaking a door down and but pu pushing the door in. I mean, that's happened to me several times in London. <laughs> I've been burgled that way. And but apparently in Finland, that just cannot happen because the doors open outwards on all the houses. Oh, yeah, yeah. And, so, you know, I just would never <laughs> have even known that. So there were things like that we had. We had, um, you know, script editors going through the scripts and giving notes like that because um yeah, you, unless you'd actually lived there for, I don't think you'd know. Yeah, it's a very, very, uh, uh, very uh, original country, and uh, and yes. we can feel. I mean, there are many many sequences that are super local. All these ceremonies on the twenty first of June. I mean, there there is a long, long ceremony happening at the beginning of the movie. This is typically a Finnish, you know, uh, 
Finnish fest. It's, uh, it's, it's called Johannus. So, uh, and we can feel um, that it is so authentical because all characters are Finnish. Apart you, all the stuff is more or less Finnish, right? Absolutely, yeah, yeah. And I mean, and that's what I mean. I mean, I had done research and, and found out about the, the Midsummer Festival, and um, uh, but everybody in Finland that was working on the um, on the TV show, I mean, it's all their influence. All the actors are Finnish, the directors Finnish, the DOP, everybody, mm. all the departments. So I think you know that that makes it feel so authentic as well. Okay, so and authenticity means that the characters are are are. I mean, extremely important, and through their life, we can feel the temper of this of this country, of what they are living. So we see in this in this TV series there are two storylines. There is a quite a sophisticated plot because there is a mystery. After only two episodes, I must say that uh, I'm just look forward to, to to knowing who has killed this little boy, which is just I'm not revealing anything. It's just happening at the beginning, beginning. Of, uh, of the first episode. Um, so storyline is extremely important. Characters also, you take some time to put in place all the characters one by one. We follow them in their daily life. Um, how did you manage to interlace all these different stories? I mean, the official one, the plot, and I would say the journeys of each character starting in 2007 and, and, and then happening and I, again, I didn't see the end, but uh, uh, in the in 2019 to the final ending, is it a, an exercise where you have all these stories in parallel and you put the emphasis on one or the others? How did you manage to write this way? Well, I mean that's a really good question, and, and I think it's a slow process. But it's a, I mean at times when you're trying to work out. So we worked at the Bible first, which was. Uh, um, all the episodes, all the storylines, what's going to happen, and and I think it all starts from character with this show, and um, and I think because um because I've spent twenty years being an actor, I really wanted every single part to be not only a part that you could understand and kind of uh, would definitely sympathise with, but even if they've got their faults, but but also that would be a really brilliant part to play, so that nobody was just kind of boring the. The grandma or the mm. wife or you know so so you wanted e each one of them to have something to do and um and some joy in, in, in being able to do it and, and to maybe surprise the audience and um uh so um so we started with with working out all the different characters and then um and then yeah it became this massive jigsaw puzzle which could have really I remember at one point <laughs> just thinking my brain was going to explode because you kind of can't get all the way through it but uh but yeah, I think we got there in the end because um, because yeah, they, well, hopefully when you see it, they everyone should have their own um, their own journey and their own kind of moment where you understand a lot more of where they've come from or why they put up with this or what secrets they were hiding or how they feel about different things. Anyway, I don't want to give anything away. So yeah, it's a core. Of, I mean, core TV series. We have characters, a bit, I mean, relationships. It's a family uh, uh, drama. Relationships are important between brothers between. Uh, father and sons, uh, between uh, sons and fathers, I mean, different generations uh, uh, on yeah. the different timelines. So it's really sophisticated to follow all these characters and to be really uh, uh, in their in their mood. Um, I have realized that uh, you have and a lot of rhythm. Of Sorry. Yeah. I, have no, I was just going to say, it's a, yeah. it's a kind of joy to be able to have the characters, all of them, that have two timelines yeah. so that you have them all 12 years apart so then then as a writer you you go oh, well they can't be exactly the same 12 years ago as they are now so you get to give all of them an arc and a journey which is great fun yeah we we we, we feel that they made quite a journey in this in this in these years physically but also in the way they behave we, we can feel that so it's really well done um in terms of rhythm i mean there is music uh, uh, use of flashbacks uh, a progressive reveal of the mystery. Uh, uh, the editing is extremely uh, important, uh, especially because we, we we spend time between the two timelines, so it's uh, it's really dynamic. Uh, I would like to understand if all this dynamic approach is done because uh, there is a lot of work done afterwards on the shooting, on the editing part, or from the scripting phase, did you have already in mind this rhythm to input in, in the TV series? 
Oh yeah, um, yeah. I mean, that was part of the whole concept of the show, really, that you would come to an understanding of what happened uh, twelve years ago only at a certain point in the present day. So um, yeah, it was all, it's all part of the sort storytelling process. But I do understand what you mean. You could at other points move them around in the edit, but actually, ours was pretty much as it was scripted. Because uh, did you take part on the editing part or the uh, the shooting part? Did you have an, an input there, or did they take this and on their own modify a little bit it so that we we see this flow, which is quite incredible, as I saw that on the at least on the two first episodes. Well, um, uh, I, I, I was certainly part of the editing process, um, and um, but I wasn't part of the filming process, and 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 they did a fantastic job, and it really does feel. Um, because it's very hard when you're when you have those two distinct timelines to know how uh, distinguished they should look before uh, before you can know how much an audience will will be able to recognize which one is which. I guess that's the thing. Mm. So you, you don't want to make it too obvious. You don't want to make it too subtle, but you want to know where you are quite easily so the storytelling can flow through it. And I think mm. I think they did a fantastic job of achieving that. I think Mika, the director, really um, uh, understood how that would play out and I think um yeah I think that really worked when you when you see it all um which, as you've seen the first couple of episodes I think you, you get to understand what's happening pretty quickly yeah you're right uh and it's thrilling it's really I mean really amazing um what have, have been your influences if any w when writing on this tv series did you have in mind this Nordic noir style or some family dramas like the I mean in our community dramas like Bloodline on, on Netflix or Sharp object, Objects on HBO. It could be Broadchurch in the UK or even the uh, the truth about the Harry Kebber affair. I mean, where we have flashbacks every time, a mystery. Um, did you have influences or even not uh, with TV series, but also movies or books or? Uh, yeah, I mean, my, my sort of favorite are 90s thrillers they don't really do the, the flashback thing in the same way mm. but um you know i love um oh my god there's so many of them sleeping with the enemy the hand that rocks the cradle jagged edge uh fatal attraction all those kind of movies and 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 the different devices that they use and um but i i definitely watched bloodline and i thought that was fantastic i mean the difference there with their i think they have a flashback and a flash forward in Bloodline. Yeah. And I think yeah, that, yeah. Exactly, on uh, season two or three, then progressively we are more in the future, effect effectively. Yeah. Mm. Right, yeah, and I, but I think, I, think um, I wanted us to learn more quickly about what happened, so to incorporate it more within the story. Um, but I guess everything you watch has some kind of influence on you. And um, uh, uh, certainly the, the whole genre of the Nordic noir and I'm just a really big fan of psychology and mm. why we do what we do and that's sort of eternally fascinating to me so I think it was um, that's the influence as much as, as anything is human nature and if you were in this situation you found yourself in this situation what do you do how far do you go for your children or there's quite a few different questions that um, are in encapsulated in the show without giving any yeah. you, you, you refer somehow more to movies and it's true that in six episodes it's a long movie it's a mini series so probably it's not, not the same way to build uh, a three seasons uh, TV series and an exercise on six focused episodes I believe there is probably no clearly a season two because it's a it's an exercise in six uh, in six episodes but uh, Probably, yeah, it's 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 more a movie than than a long TV series in the way it is conceived. Yeah, I, I mean, certainly the story of this family is um, finished by the end. Um, so, uh, um, yeah, it was it was never conceived as um as a seasonal thing. So, so I, I guess then you don't you don't have to worry about mm. um what, you know teasing the audience with more or l less. Uh, you can give them everything you want to, I guess, yeah. And yeah. I have seen that, so it is produced by uh, Warner Nordic, so it's an international international high-end uh, TV series, it's in Cannes Series Festival. It has been already distributed by Elisa in Finland. Do you have, I'm, I'm leaving a bit the scripting world, but do you have already uh, today uh, a distribution plan? Uh, is it, I mean, shall we see this series 
uh, shortly uh, in Western Europe or? Uh, that is all in flux at the moment. That's all been sort of, um, uh, I, I'm not the very, um, what's the best way of putting it? I, I haven't got the latest information on that. I know there are things in negotiation and I know also things have been put back by the lockdown, but mm. um, but I'm, but yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm pretty sure we, you, we will be able to see it in different um, yeah. countries. Soon. It was quite a personal question because I'm, <laughs> I'm looking forward to see the rest of it. It was, oh, it was so great, yeah. yeah. Um, well, anyway, I, I think that uh, we have a good understanding and I think that you can tease uh, our, our users on betaseries.com uh, to go and watch it because it's uh, live on Can uh, online. So during the Can series festival, the deities broadcast in the uh, uh, Amphitheatre Louis Lumière. At the same time, it's possible for 1,300 people, I think, in addition, to watch it uh, from their coach, you know, so they can subscribe, it's for free. They can be themselves right. festivalier, you know, of the event. So just for these people and for those that will be in, in, in the Grand Palais, uh, uh, in a th just few words to, to encourage people to go and watch it, what would be the few words you would, uh, you would give away as an as a, as in incentive? Oh my goodness, uh, well, one, I'm really jealous if you are there because I wish I was. And um, uh, I really hope you enjoy it. And um, yeah, I mean, I mean, I think people that I've, people, I've, I've sat with with audiences that have watched it and I think when they've watched two episodes, they're full of ideas about what is gonna happen and who is responsible for what. Uh, yeah, so see if you can work that out. I'm sure but they I will. Still, <laughs> <I'm interested> <laughs> Thank you so much, Kate. It was a great discussion. I, I love the Thank series. You. I'm sure everybody will, will love it so much. Uh, we hope, I mean, for the best in the competition uh, because there are some awards uh, uh, happening soon. So, and, and I hope also that the distribution will be uh, wonderful uh, on the, as many platforms as possible and especially in France. <laughs> so thank, thank you so you much answer. and, and uh, see you very, very soon in our studio physically, I hope for another series or uh, for this one, when will be, uh, it will be on the air in France. Thank you. Fantastic. Thank you so much for your bye time. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.